It's that time again, a new version of Photoshop has just been released. So here, let me give you a tour and show you what's new in Photoshop 2024. Now starting off with the first feature is the Photoshop Generative Fill AI. It is now out of beta and you can use it in the normal Photoshop for commercial use. We had this picture right here and we wanted to add ourselves something to the side of this photo. We can simply get ourselves the polygonal lasso tool and we would draw ourselves a selection or an area we want it to appear. Go into the generative fill, click on here and type in anything that you want it to generate. And this will start to use Adobe's generative fill AI to create a red canoe on this photo. And if we have a look at this, you can see it's created one really big boat. We can go further out and see which one is the best result. You can also remove any object or item in your photo just by getting yourself the lasso tool. You would draw yourself a selection around the object that you wanted to remove. And then once you've gone all the way around, you would go back onto your generative fill, click on generate. It is completely gone in a matter of seconds. You can even have a look, see the different variations and see which one is the best. And personally, I would say this one is a very close match to the original. Another benefit about using the generative fill in Photoshop is if you go over to the crop tool, you will notice that Adobe have now integrated the generative expand into the crop tool. You can either set it to the default transparent, you can set it to generative expand or content aware fill. So let's say for example, you wanted to expand this photo and then hold an alt option key, drag this out, expand this photo, click on the generate button. It has now filled in those missing areas and we can have a look, see which one is the best variation. Now, like I said before, the only downside to this is that sometimes you have certain areas like this where they are perfectly fine. And over to the right side, we have this area right here, which is really blurry and it looks really odd. You can have a look, see if there's any better variation, but you can see all of them have this exact same problem. Now, if you want to, you can also do it the normal way, which is of course to use the selection tool. You would get yourself a selection and then also go inside of this image right here to blend the generation. If you go to generative fill and click on generate, this will once again fill this in. And as you can see, it's actually done a much better job than before because we have some really nice high quality details near the top. We still have some of the blurriness on the edges, and near the bottom, you'll see it right here as well. Now, a quick simple fix for this is to go to filter, go down to sharpen, and then just get yourself a sharpness. And this will sometimes fix it and make it blend with the original. Another improvement is to do with the contextual taskbar. If yours is hidden or missing for whatever reason, you can go to window, go down to the bottom, and you'll see the contextual taskbar. If you enable this, it will bring it back and make it visible. Now the actual improvement and the change to this is that you have three different types of contextual taskbars. The first one is the generic select subject and remove background. But once you've got yourself a selection, let's say around here, you can then have the generative fill and all of your selection options. And then of course, the final one is to do with the generative expand crop. If you go to the crop tool, it will automatically switch it to the third one, which is this one right here. It will give you the option for the generative expand. You will have the resolution. You will have the align photo and also your options to pin the taskbar. Now, this next improvement is to do with the remove tool in Photoshop. For some of you that know the remove tool before, you would have to get yourself a selection around the object and you would also have to fill this in in order to remove the whole object. However, in the newest version of Photoshop 2024, all you need to do now is simply get yourself a selection around the object, making sure you include all of the edges. And then once you've gone all the way around, you go back to the very first one, and this will automatically fill it in and just completely erase 
that object from the photo. And then finally, the very last improvement is to do with the lighting in Photoshop. So as you may know, before in Photoshop, you would have a dedicated area with all of your settings and options available for the lighting controls. However, what Adobe has done now is they've simply moved it over to the gradient tool. So if you select yourself the gradient tool, you will have your normal circle spotlight you'll have a basic linear light. Now, technically these are gradients. However, you can use them as a light source for your image. What we can do is we can get ourselves the adjustment of a color lookup, and we would set the preset to the Moonlight 3D. We can also go back into the adjustments and get ourselves a hue and saturation just to reduce the saturation to make it look realistic. Now, once you've got yourself both of these adjustments, all we need to do now is click on to the background and we're just going to get ourselves a basic black and white gradient. You then want to drag this out and get yourself a circle gradient. Now in this option, you have the ability to control the colors. You can control the smoothness of how aggressive the light source is going to be. You can also double left click on the color and change this color to anything that you want. Now, in this case, we want to set the outer color to a black color. For the inner color, we want to control and have the ability to change the opacity. In order to do this, you want to go to the properties and in here you will have all of your options for your gradient. We're going to lower the opacity down to 0%. And what this will do is it will give us this sniper looking light source right here. We can control the size of this light if we want to, if we want to make it smaller. We can also apply any effect alongside the opacity, which allows us to turn this down. You can also move this above all of your layers. Now, let's say that you had a specific light source in your image and you needed that pointed light source. What you can do is you can left click on here, drag this in and narrow the light source. This is honestly perfect for a spotlight or a lamppost. And the great thing about this is that you can also apply this gradient onto your adjustment layers. You would select yourself the mask layer and we're going to select the color lookup you can get yourself the gradient tool and then left click, drag this out and apply it onto your image. At the moment, we need to invert this mask by pressing control or command and I. And as you can see, we now have a very specific light source area. And that is pretty much it. That is the new improvements and features in Photoshop 